Good morning and welcome to Family Time this week. Where we're going to explore a Bible story, but of course we are in, um, as a nation, we're in this period of national mourning. And so hence I have placed a, we're going to be using paper later on, and I have a piece of black card just to remember um, the, the fact that black is often a colour of mourning, of remembering, of respecting um, at a time of loss. As, as a nation, we remember the death of Prince Philip, the Duke of Edinburgh. So let's pray as we begin. Loving God, God of all mercy, we thank you for your love for us. We thank you that we can gather as um, your church, as family time this morning. And pray for our time but pray for all those who have lost and lost loved ones. Pray especially for the Queen and the Royal Family, for all who in this last year have lost loved ones and who mourn at this time. We pray that you would bring us peace and bring us hope for the future, even in the midst of this time. And so bless us, we pray, and we pray that our time together will be a blessing to you now and always, Lord. Amen. Now, as we remember, as we do mourn, as we uh, remember all that Prince Philip did for the country and in, in public service, we do pray um, for, for him and the nation, for, for the Queen and the Royal Family. But we also remember that we have hope because of the events of Easter. So, we're not forgetting Prince Philip, but we are going to put that to the side as we remember that it's because of Easter that we have the hope that we are reunited with God in due course, that Christ has brought salvation and peace for the world, and we have that hope of knowing God for all eternity. So we're going to be concentrating on a particular character today in our Bible story. Um, you'll, you'll know him well, Thomas often called Doubting Thomas. And just before I do that, morning to Amy and Summer, morning to Babs, and morning to Adele and Amber. It's good to have you with us. And everyone else who will be joining us now, later, or <coughs> during the week. Um, oh, and Georgina with Georgina and Florence. Lovely, it's great to have you with us this morning. And Marion. Uh, Marion, you got home very quickly. That's good going. I'm impressed. Um, so, let, let's uh, continue as we go on. So I was talking about Thomas, doubting Thomas. And I don't know if you remember the story. Jesus has come back from the dead, the resurrection. And um, initially, it's only Mary and the women at the, at the tomb who see him. And the disciples are puzzled. They don't know. The other disciples, the male disciples, are all very um, puzzled. Oh, Stephen Karen. Having seen you yesterday, it's lovely to see you logged in there today. Bless you, it's lovely to see you. Um, but, but Jesus, um, there's this amazing story when the disciples, they're worried because they know they, they knew that they had been associated with the Jesus. Jesus had been uh, crucified, had been put to death. And they were worried that the authorities, the Romans, would be looking for them as well. So they were in a house, in a locked room. The doors were locked. And it says... In, in the Bible it says, in John chapter 20, the doors were locked because they were afraid of the Jews. Then Jesus came and stood right in the middle of them and said, peace be with you. How did he get in? This is one of those mysterious times in the life of Jesus where he had physically been resurrected and yet I suppose there was this sort of sense of him being heavenly but physical, real and not a ghost but um, able to just appear and stand in the midst of the disciples. And I'm not surprised Jesus had to say, peace be with you, because I would imagine you're all sitting there or standing around chatting a bit fearful, and then suddenly it's, boom, ah, ah. I would need Jesus to say, peace be with you. And for me to think, okay, that was weird. But now the unfortunate thing for Thomas was he wasn't there on that occasion. And the disciples said to Thomas, we've seen him, we've seen him. And Thomas, he, he, he says, um, no, I don't believe you. I, I can't take that on board until I see Jesus myself 
I won't believe you. And uh, later on, Jesus does appear purely for Thomas. He, or, or, or well, he appears to all of them again, but Thomas, he speaks directly to Thomas and says, here I am, will you now believe? And where, where Thomas has said, look, I'm, I need to touch him, I need to touch the wounds on his hands. At the, when Jesus appears to Thomas, he, Thomas then says, I believe. He doesn't need to touch you, he, he simply believes. So poor old Thomas, because sometimes he, he, well, he's called Doubting Thomas and we think, oh, he's the one that doubted. But actually, I suspect that many of us may struggle with that. And uh, maybe some of us, as we read some of the stories in the Bible or we hear people talking about their faith, they may think, I'm not sure, I'm not sure. Oh, am I, am I wrong for doubting? Doubt is part of what we go through as our faith grows. Um, our faith will grow as we question, as we look to God, as we say, Lord, you know, show yourself to me in some way or other. It might be when we see the spring, when we see the miracle of flowers, that that confirms to us that Jesus, that, that God is alive. Or it may be that we actually feel God speaking to us, maybe through a passage in the Bible or our prayers, whatever it may be. But when we go through times of doubt, it, it, it sometimes makes, makes you think, well, I wonder, can we do certain things? Um, you know, what, what, what is it that makes us uh, believe? So I'm going to do a little, little, little thing with a bit of paper now, um, hopefully a bit of fun. Uh, as you can see, I've got a couple of different coloured color bits of paper here. I only need two strips, which we have got fully prepared here. And it's very simple. Now, if you've made um, paper chains, it's very similar to making paper chains. But what I'm going to do is say to you, could you take two of these strips, make them into two circles, and then turn them into a square? Let's see. First of all, I'm going to make the two circles. So, very simply, now because I've got quite, because they are quite big, I'm making these quite, gluing quite specifically and thickly. Now, that's one. So that's one of our circles. Oh, remember to hold it a bit lower so that you can see that. And just to mention, these should be um, identical shape and size, the, the two bits, hopefully to make the square. Now, what I need to do on this one, I shouldn't turn too much of this, but this is the little trick of it, um, is to first of all glue the, put a bit of glue on the middle bit so that I can, just, just before I put it down, I'm thinking, am I doing this the right way? I am doing this the right way, I think. No, I'm not doing it the right way, am I? But that has to go on the inside. Oh, dear me. Of course. There we are. There we are. So it's going to be a bit gluey where I'm putting my fingers at the moment. It's going to be a bit tacky, but that's okay. That's fine. If it's going to stick. Let me just make sure I can put a bit more glue underneath there and make sure that that sticks. Good. Oh, saved, saved myself there. And then we're going to finish off by making the second circle. Okay? So now this is one of these tricks. I'm grateful to the internet. Um, uh, for, for all these different ideas that we use week by week. Um, and I'm sure some of you will know this one already, but let's go with this. So, we have two circles. We're going to make that into a square. How do we make it into a square? Well, this is where the scissors come into play. And this is where I get very hopeful. So, I'm just going to go straight through with the scissors and cut the whole lot. There, done that bit. And you're probably thinking, ah, I'm beginning to see how this might happen now. Now, of course, because I've got that wrong in the first place, you put glue in the middle, it has slightly stuck there. And now what I need to do is simply cut down the middle all the way through made a mess of my cut, I do apologise. And if I let go, <gasps> two circles have become a square. I'm quite, I'm quite chuffed, apart from my initial faux pas at the start, I've just about made two circles into a square. So, did you doubt that that was possible? 
Or did you think, I know how to do that anyway? It's part of how we grow as we, as we exercise our faith, as we think about it, as we think, what is it that we can do to, to, um, uh, to, to test ourselves, to make ourselves think and all that sort of stuff? Well, I thought we could go a little bit further than this because when Thomas then saw Jesus, he believed and he would have gone along with all the other disciples and preached the good news um, and, and, and said, to, said to people, do you believe in Jesus? Have you heard the stories of Jesus? All this sort of thing. It didn't stop him from being, um, for, for, from being any less a disciple than the others. His faith had grown. And I wonder what, what the disciples wanted, what we often say, what, what I often pray, is that when people see us, that they would see Jesus, that we would reflect the love of Jesus. So that I'm sure what Thomas wanted as he went out and about was that he reflected and showed the love of Jesus to those that he was with. And so I was thinking that actually this could become like a picture frame. So maybe, let me get a pen, maybe we could write, this will be quick and not very, not very good writing, but and I'm going to write, let people see Jesus in, oops, me. And so that could become like a picture frame. Not a great picture frame and not a great, not a great portrait in the middle there. Don't know if that, if there's a better side or not. Probably not. But how about that? You could make your own frame with your two circles into a square and have let people see Jesus in me. And maybe you could almost, you could put that, you know what, you could put that on a mirror. Yeah, put it on a mirror. And so each morning you could see your face in it and read, let people see Jesus in me. And that could be your little message for yourself each day to reflect the love of God that gives us the hope in all that we do in our lives, gives us the hope of salvation, the hope of peace in our lives, and also the hope and reality of remembering that as we lose people in our lives, as we remember that we actually have them, that, that we have the hope of eternity, of sharing eternal life with you, with, with, with God. So, let people see Jesus in us. Shall we pray as we come to an end? Lord, we do thank you for your love for us. We thank you for your care for Thomas, for appearing to him and taking the time to spend with him so that he knew that you, uh, your resurrection was real. We thank you that you would do the same for each one of us. And I pray that we would know you more deeply this week. And even as we remember loss and we mourn the loss of uh, His Royal Highness Prince Philip, as we pray for the Queen and the Royal Family, and as we pray for one another in our own difficulties, may we also rejoice in knowing you and sharing in your kingdom today and always. Amen. And so I'm going to leave that as your picture. Let people see Jesus in us, knowing that God is with us now and always. I pray that you will continue to remember the joy of Easter in the midst of all that will go on this week. And I look forward to sharing with you um, next week. And while I'm quickly here, just quickly to um, Nora, lovely to see you with us, Nora, bless you, and Jackie and Pat. Oh, what a, it's just lovely to join together, knowing that we share in the joy of the Lord. So God bless you and keep you... Oh, quickly back on my face, sorry about that. I, I'll quickly show you a quick portrait. There we are. And pray that we will know God more deeply now and always. Bless you. Amen.